slash city council TV while we were doing it. So I'm just letting everybody know. Um, folks who are testifying, uh, if somebody's asking you, where can I watch, give them the same Zoom link that you've got and they can come watch it here on the Zoom link. Um, so does that make sense to everybody? Colleague. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I, yeah, I think Matt said something, but I couldn't hear. Makes cool. sense to me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, okay, sorry. I had my sound off, so it's good I discovered that I couldn't hear anyone else. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, great. So, um, so we are going to jump in. One second, everyone. I just got to pull up my notes here. Okay. Um, I'm calling this meeting of the Boston City Council's Ways and Means Committee to order. Um, for the record, my name is Kenzie Bach. I'm the District 8 City Councilor and also the Chair of the City Council's Committee on Ways and Means. Um, this public hearing is being recorded. It's being live streamed at Zoom right now and it'll be rebroadcast on Comcast Channel 8, RCN Channel 82, Verizon Channel 1964, and also the Council's YouTube channel. Um, as I just mentioned uh, in the informal session, um, the City Council TV live stream is down right now, but this can be viewed by the public through Zoom and it'll be rebroadcast later. Um, this is uh, the last of our regularly scheduled hearings in the City Council's budget review process, which has encompassed 27 hearings over six weeks. Um, despite COVID-19 and uh, the public health emergency we find ourselves in, the city still needs to decide on a budget for next year. Um, and it's the council's role to really scrutinize that budget um, and think about how we best meet the needs of the year ahead. Um, so we've been doing that um, and we've been hearing from lots of departments. Um, we've had a large number of hearings with BPS and now tonight's hearing is a dedicated public testimony hearing. So we're really focused on hearing from the public. Um, you can join this hearing. If, you, if you're watching this, you probably know that you can join this hearing from the Zoom link. Um, that is available on the public notice. And I'll just be asking people, I'll be recognizing people in turn and asking them to state their name and affiliation and, uh, and limit your comments to about two minutes. Um, just so people know, um, the way that will work for, um, for those who are testifying is uh, when you've been speaking for two minutes, I'll hold up my gavel. Um, and then um, when you, and then if you, if you talk on past that, you may hear a chime. Um, at some point, if you've been talking for a long time, just because we got so many people trying to get in, I will I will gavel um, you out. But I'm hoping that uh, everybody can uh, keep their comments direct and to the point. Um, but also, we really want to hear them. We're excited to have you all weigh in. And I think for the council, um, in many ways, we see ourselves as kind of a representative body that is like looking through this at looking at the budget through the eyes of the public and trying to think about. Um, how, how it's going to cash out on the ground in our lives as citizens in Boston. Um, if you're not able to provide testimony tonight, you can also submit written testimony to ccc.wm at boston.gov. Um, we'll keep accepting testimony and distributing it to counselors throughout the budget process until the city council ultimately votes on the budget. Um, you can also go to boston.gov slash council dash FY21 budget. Um, and that's a, that'll, there's a place to submit your testimony. You can also submit a video. We have several people who have submitted videos in advance for this hearing, um, and we'll be playing those at the conclusion of the hearing. Today's hearing is on docket 0588 to 0590, orders for the FY21 operating budget, including annual appropriations for departmental operations for the school department and for other post-employment benefits. Docket 0591 to 0592, orders for capital fund transfer appropriations, and docket 0593 to 0596, 
orders for the capital budget, including loan orders and lease purchase agreements. Um, so that's a long way of saying that it's a hearing on all of the dockets that make up the city's proposed budget. Um, and our focus, like I said, is just gonna be public testimony. Um, so I will give my colleagues who are here with me a very brief chance to just say hi. Um, that's uh, Councillor Matt O'Malley, District 6, Councillor Anisa, uh, sorry, Councillor Ed Flynn, District 2, um, Councillor Anissa Asabi George, uh, District um, at Large, and Councillor Kim Janey, District 7, and our Council President. So I'll just give them a very brief opportunity to say hello, and then we'll jump straight into public testimony. Uh, Councillor Flynn. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Block. And I also want to say thank you to central staff um, again and, and to the public for testifying tonight. Looking forward to hearing uh, the comments from residents across the city. Thank you, Councilor Bach. Great. Thank you so much, Councilor Flynn. Councilor O'Malley. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be with you uh, virtually. I hope everybody is safe and well. Uh, this is a great opportunity to hear directly from our bosses, the people of, uh, of Boston. I'm delighted I know a number of folks uh, who share my call for a full renovation of Billings Field in West Roxbury are going to join us in well. I'm looking forward to hearing from them. Really looking forward to hearing from everybody tonight on this important issue. Uh, thanks so much and look forward to getting to public testimony uh, forthwith. Great. Thank you, Councillor O'Malley. Councillor Asabi George. Thank you, Madam Chair. Excited to uh, get to public testimony. I think this feature is probably the one where I learn the most. So excited to hear from our residents across the city. Um, and to hear about their interests and their desires for how uh, their money is spent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Great, thank you. And uh, Council President Kim Janey. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I really appreciate how you have organized um, the hearings this budget season. Um, I know we're having technical difficulties, but I appreciate everyone's patience as we uh, move on with our budget process and, and prioritize hearing uh, from the public. So I'd, I'd like to sit back uh, and hear what folks have to say. Uh, thank you. Great. Thanks so much. And uh, we've just also been joined by my colleague, Councillor Lydia Edwards from District 1. Um, Councillor Edwards, we're just opening with, with brief welcome remarks. Is it... Do I go now for me? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, I'll be brief. I'm here to listen, learn, uh, make sure that we caught all the questions that we need to give to the administration. So thank you. Thanks so much. Um, great. And then we're just going to jump straight into uh, public testimony. So we're actually going to start public testimony with um, there's uh, three members of the public who are going to um, testify in Cantonese. Um, and Melissa Lowe from uh, Councillor Flynn's office is going to help with some interpretation. Um, so I want to, um, and I know she's here for a certain window, so I want to start with those. So that'll be uh, Leah Wu, May Yu, and Maggie Chen. So I'll be... Um, all right. So uh, Leah, why don't you um, start us off and uh, go ahead. Oh, hi. How are you? How are you? How are Good evening, uh, everyone. I am a parent from the Boston Quincy Elementary School. Um, Currently, I have two children who are in the elementary school. I hope the um, city government would uh, seriously uh, think about um, providing more funding to the public school in the next coming year. Due to the uh, uh, COVID-19 um, beginning March 16th, um, all the children have um, stopped attending school and they have been learning remotely. Yeah, so um, and therefore they have um a cease having the ability to learn. So we really hope that there will be more resources um, 
uh, focus on hiring more staff, for example, um, assistants in the classroom to help the students get up to speed on the class time that they have lost. My own son um, has special needs. Um, his first language is Cantonese, and our primary language um, that is spoken at home is also Cantonese. However, the language of instruction in the classroom is English. We have been unable to assist him with his um, homework or um, curriculum at all. So there has been a lot of um, time that has gone by, and he has lost this time in his ability to learn. And we're really hoping and strongly encouraged that in the next um, coming year in September, um, there could be resources put into hiring um, a Cantonese um, teacher's assistant to assist him uh, with the learning that he's lost and to help him catch up. Um, there, are, there has been an ongoing um, concern with um, also interpretation that has been provided at the school. Um, many are not professional and we as parents have not felt like we had sufficient, um, we had sufficient experience in assessing um, interpretation. Yeah, so we really hope that um, the city council could monitor and to um, push for more funding and resources in investing in professional interpreters. And, and my last comment is, um, as many of you know, the Quincy School is a historical school. However, the facilities inside, um, not only are they dated, but they're old and um, are falling apart. And uh, one of the biggest concerns we have as parents are um, sort of, um, especially in this climate, uh, the cleanliness of um, the school, especially um, its bathroom and its ability to offer our children um, running water for them to, to sanitize themselves. And um, many times um, the toilets um, cannot be flushed and um, there, there are many issues with running water. 同埋,因為這個疫情呢,好多周圍是困難嘛,因為你要整翻好啲細仔嚟困咪乾淨啲咯,大家都放心啲啦,學校環境好呢,家長都放心。And I'm speaking um, about this matter in light of COVID-19, just having um, a sanitized and sanitary environment um, will make me as a parent feel much uh, safer um, to send my child to school. Yeah, he mong jing fu, ho yi, uh, nidi ho hao la yu ji jo do di big nidi gung up ho, lay on pie nidi jenna yu koi si nya halo. We really hope that, um, you will seriously think about, um, providing more resources to, um, schools such as ours, especially in light of COVID 19. 同埋,即係話,你撥多啲錢落學校,同埋嗰個,到開學嗰陣時,要付錢付校,等啲老師幫補下補助,即係補習啲細路仔。And as you know, a lot of the children that attended um, Quincy Elementary School are bilingual students, and um, they really need the support. Um, in the before school and after school 
uh, uh, time to supplement their learning. Um, I, I, I can almost say that during this period of time that um, since they've been home, there has been zero learning. Um, when they do attend school, um, it is um, more structured and they're taught by professionals. Um, and therefore, they're better um, equipped in, in their learning experience. So this is all I have to say. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, just before we go to Mayu, I'm just going to acknowledge that we are also joined by Councillor Julia Mejia at large. Councillor Mejia, if you just want to say a very quick word of greeting. No, um, this is about public testimony. I'm really excited to listen and learn and figuring out um, what we can do as a council to support the voices of the people. So thank you for participating and looking forward to listening and learning. Great, thank you so much, Councillor. All right, um, next up is Mayu. Uh, uh, yes. Um, my name is Mei Yu, and um, I have a child who is in second grade at the Quincy Elementary School. I am speaking on behalf of um, a large number of us parents um, in hoping to leverage um, more resources for the children and students at the Quincy Elementary School. This pandemic has robbed students of precious in-class learning time. Um, remote learning could never take the place of in-class instruction. Uh, not only have they not been able to um, learn new curriculums, um, we have seen that they have regress and backslide. Uh, Therefore, we're really hoping that there could be more financial resources in investing in our teachers so that they could invest their time um, in before school and after school tutorial to get our children back up to speed. Uh, as well as um, supplemental um, learning in um, the summer period. Uh, Currently, there are limited space and seats available to students uh, for summer learning opportunities. And I'm really hoping and advocating that these seats would increase so that more students could take advantage um, of this precious opportunity. Uh, uh, we really need to get our students back up to speed. Being a parent at the Quincy School, we are always in need of interpreters and we're strongly advocating for BPS to, serious, to seriously look into hiring professional interpreters. We have had many years of having experienced many different types of meeting, uh, from um, IEP meetings to uh, parent teachers meetings to um, um, site council meetings that are uh, done at the school to larger meetings hosted by BPS and um, numerous times we have set through um, interpretation that are inaccurate, uh, interpretations um, that are not fully rendered. Uh, yeah. Uh... 
誒、呃、在早早一個禮拜咧，我開咗一個 I A P 會議啦。誒、呃、嗰、那個翻譯人員咧就講到一半，嗰、那個誒語言治療師咧，佢竟然幫我翻譯，嗰、那個翻譯人員就離場，嗌佢離場。所以我好希望學校咧，或者教育局請一啲最精誒、uh, 比較專業嘅翻譯人員咯。Case in point, I had an IEP meeting just a week ago for my for my child, and、uh, in the middle of the meeting,、uh, the interpreter that was hired for that particular meeting was actually asked to leave、uh, because the interpreter wasn't performing effectively. And the speech pathologist had to take over and serve as the interpreter for the rest of the meeting. Yeah, 我講嘅係咁多，希望希望可以爭取更多嘅資源俾我哋啲學生咯，等佢哋誒提高佢哋嘅學習水平。Thank you， 多謝，就係咁多。And this is a rather common experience from、uh, fellow parents.、Um, and This is all I have to say for now. Thank you so much for your time and、uh, listening to us. And we really just hope that we can leverage more resources in helping our students. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Mayu.、Um, Thank next you. up, next up is、uh, Maggie Chen. Uh, hello, 大家好。呃，我系唐，我系唐街居民。呃。同時咧，我亦都係誒 public school 嘅家長嚟嘅。I'm a resident of Chinatown, and I'm also a parent of a child who's currently attending PBS. BPS. 我個大仔咧就喺誒 Boston Latin Academy 讀緊八年班，個細仔咧依家就準備九月份咧會喺誒誒做曬昆士小學嗰度係讀 K one 嘅。I have an older child who's currently an eighth grader at the Boston Land Academy, and I have a younger son who's、um, planning to attend his first year in public school at the Josiah Quincy School for K-1. Uh, 咁头头先嗰两个家长讲嘅，我都非常之同意啦。I completely agree with、um, the two parents who have testified before me. 誒、uh, ，但係我誒、uh, 更加關注嘅係，因為呢一次嘅疫情影響之下咧，誒、uh, 學生嘅安全嘅問題。However, I'm actually more concerned about,、um, in light of COVID-19, the safety of all of our students. 誒、uh, ，因為咧，我誒、uh, 我對呢個預算案咧就冇點樣瞭解過，但係。我聽講係三月初嘅時候就已經制定咗呢一個預算案。I haven't had the privilege、um, to be able to assess、um, a lot of the BPS public hearing, which I have heard started taking place in March, and I was told that many of the budgets have already been set. 咁，但係大家都知道，自從誒三、uh, 月十八號，即係。公立學校關閉以嚟咧，美國嘅疫情咧係發展得非常之迅速嘅，而且依家已經係誒一百六十幾萬嘅案例病例，喺麻省依家都已經超過九萬幾例，誒、呃、每日都仲喺度增加緊，而且誒、呃、專家都話秋季嘅時候咧可能會仲有第二波。Um, so ever since、um, BPS closed on March 18th,、um, the numbers of、um, infection,、uh, the the cases of infection has gone up. In the U.S. itself, it's over one million, and in the state of Massachusetts, we're approaching a hundred thousand, and it's just continually、um, climbing the numbers. And some experts have also said that this coming fall, we're going to see an uptick. 所以喺呢個情況下，我覺得如果係三月初嗰陣時，你哋設計嘅預算案咧，有冇包括一個即係話一個比較安全，即、就、係、是、可以設置一個安全嘅環境俾學生九月份嘅時候重新翻到校園 ？So I was wondering the、um, budget that has been set for BPS that、um, started at the beginning of the budget season, if any of that has been Change to include、um, safety measures、uh, for students to be able to、uh, go back to school safely. 
，因为我个大仔依家佢翻学咧，系每一日都要坐两程巴士嘅，一程系坐银线去到德里，跟住再转一程啊嗰、那个 local 嘅巴士咧，先至可以去到学校门口嘅。For example, my older son has to take two、uh, forms of public transportation from Chinatown to get to Latin Academy. He would first have to take the Silver Line to Dudley, and then he have to change to another bus in order for him to get to the front of Boston Latin Academy. If you look at the COVID-19 vaccine, it's impossible to get out of the COVID-19 vaccine. It's impossible to get out of the COVID-19 vaccine. So, my son will have to take 又要再一次誒，即、uh, 係 take 嗰個 public transportation 去翻學，我覺得係非常之唔安全嘅。Realistically, we know that、um, a vaccine for COVID-19 would probably not be、uh, possible or in time by September. But come September, my older son would have to again take two types of public transportation for him to get to school, and I feel that would put him in、um, huge risk of being infected. 咁同埋誒，佢哋整一個學校咧，依家每一個班咧都起碼超過二十個同誒，即係二十個學生一齊上課嘅，每一堂課都係。And currently the classroom size it's um over twenty students per classroom. 誒，所以我覺得喺呢種情況下咧，即係要實現嗰個安全嘅社交距離都係根本冇乜可能，好似。So under these circumstances, I wonder how it would be possible to carry out social distancing. So, I hope that the education department can consider it. That is, if it is possible to change the school environment, that is, the parents have mentioned that their bathrooms are very simple. They don't need to use hand washing. And many bathrooms are full of water. They are not allowed to use water. Uh, so, other yeah. than you know, we we really need to、uh, closely examine the physical environment of our of our schools. Just as the parent before me who have testified, which we're all familiar with, with、uh, the the Quincy the Josiah Quincy School, that many of the faucets、uh, don't have running water, and there are no、uh, soap where students have access to to wash their hands. 咁同埋咧，誒，即係喺咁嘅情況下，係咪可以考慮即係話可以小班教學，實現小班教學，即係等佢哋有誒上課嘅時候有安全嘅社交距離 ？Is there a way that we can possibly carry out a smaller size、uh, classroom learning environment so that social distancing could realistically be carried out？ 誒，咁誒，我覺得如果小朋友即係喺學校裏邊翻學，真係可以即係喺一個安全嘅環境下咧，我哋嘅父母先至可以安心咁去上班，而唔係將佢哋放喺一個咁高危險嘅環境下邊，即係每日都提心吊膽。As a responsible parent, I feel that I would only feel、um, safe sending my child to an environment that I know that would have A relatively、um, less infection rate when other、um, um, safety measures are being taken. I would not want to go to work and feel like I'm pushing my child out、um, into an environment that I know that is not safe. 同埋我個細仔準備喺九月份喺誒做曬昆士小學咧，我依家都非常之擔心嗰個誒。依家因為佢已經係被徵用為 testing site， 我唔知道究竟到時。嗰、那個學校嘅環境係會變成點樣？因為對於佢嚟講，嗰、那、一個係佢第一個翻學嘅地點。誒、uh, ，所以我好希望即係第即係預算案裏邊一定要做足呢一啲，即係話安全嘅措施啊，搞好嗰啲衞生啊，請或者請多啲誒，即、uh, 係保潔嘅人員啊，去確保嗰個整一個學校嘅環境係安全嘅。And currently, we all know that、uh, the Josiah Quincy Elementary School is serving as one of the testing sites,、um, and my younger son is starting K1 in the coming September. And I really hope that there would be、uh, more than enough resources where there would be experts and、um, cleaning professionals that would be hired to make sure the site is completely infected and safe、uh, for our children to return to school.
誒、uh, 好啦，我講嘢講完啦，係咁咯。Thank you。Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you to Melissa for translating um those three. Uh, before we go on with public testimony, I just want to acknowledge Councillor Arroyo, um, who's also joined us. Sorry, he's stuck in the waiting room for a while. If you want to make any opening remarks, Councillor Arroyo. Uh, just briefly, I just want to say thank you to uh, the community that is here to share their voices. This is about you. Uh, I've certainly, as uh, Chairwoman Box Gavel can attest to, have had time to speak and, and have my thoughts heard. So I'm here to listen to yours, and I appreciate everybody who's taken the time to be here to do it. So thank you, uh, and and please proceed. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much, Councillor Royo. Yeah, and I do want to thank Melissa again, and I'll just. As we now move into、um, further public testimony, I'll remind folks to please keep your comments to two minutes.、Um, you'll see my gavel go up,、um, and then、uh, a little chime will sound if it's been three minutes.、Um, just because we've got a lot of people waiting to testify, but I, I did want to provide extra time. I think it's really important for us to make space to hear testimony in other languages, and and the translation takes some extra time. So I really appreciate uh, uh, everyone who just testified, and now we'll continue on. Next up is、uh, Ruby Reyes. Ruby, you have the floor. Hi,、hey, can you hear me? Yes.、Um, I、uh, I just wanted to give、um, well say thank you to the the moms who just gave testimony. I know I was on one of the school committee calls when a parent had asked for translation、uh, a couple of days beforehand and had not received it at school committee. So translation is a, a serious issue for district needs. Um, but I wanted to share that、um, Beige, I'm the director of the Boston Education Justice Alliance, and my name is Ruby Reyes. And I wanted to request additional funds for the Boston Public School budget for、um, meeting COVID efforts in terms of needs,、uh, specifically for、uh, mental health supports for parents as well as students, and additional PPE equipment for everyone.、Um, As, as many of you know, there's been chronic underfunding by the state for the Boston public schools over the past 20 years.、Um, this year, the mayor generously,、um, you know, gave a, a substantial、uh, amount to support the BPS budget.、Um, but it, it, we still had budget cuts this year, some of which were to schools that are in the the lowest performing transformation schools、uh, because of the weighted student funding formula. Schools, while they are in the transformation、um, program or transformation system that Caselli, Dr. Caselius has developed this year,、um, they received budget cuts and then received additional staff people. So for for Beja, we know that overall this budget isn't going to meet the needs of all schools, and there will be budget cuts. Um, to a smaller group of schools this year, but there has been chronic underfunding over the past 20 years. So many of our schools、um, have been missing staff, and now more than ever, with COVID efforts、um, to reopen schools, we're going to need additional staff. We're going to need additional supports.、Um, so I do want to encourage、um, the city council to think about the resiliency fund and where it can be put for Boston public school children. Um, during this time,、um, and I also just wanted to say that、um, with the state's MOU agreement with Desi,、um, that also needs to be overturned. There is、uh, many restrictions around things like increasing graduation rates, increasing MCAS scores for these transformation schools, as well as for all schools. And with、um, COVID, we know that these goals are not going to be met. And part of this agreement is a three-year、um, time period to have these goals met. So I just want to say that you know, with this MOU, it should be turned and, and done away with,、uh, at the very least, during this pandemic. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much,、um, Ruby. And now,、um, next up will be Alma Chislam, and then it'll be Weezy Waldstein.、Um, and just so folks in the、um, in the waiting room know, I, I'd appreciate because I know some people are here to testify, and some people are just watching through the Zoom link. So if you're here to testify, if you would just raise your blue hand if you can, or comment in the chat, just so I know that you're looking to be added to the list. I'm starting with the people who signed up in advance.、Um, so、uh, Alma, you have the floor. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Can hear you great. Hi. Hi. Okay. Well, um, 
I'm a member of City Life, and I also live on the Boston Neighborhood Community Land Trust. And I'm testifying today in support of Action of Equities two budget proposals. I, I'm advocating to add capacity to the Office of Economic Development so the city has staff and program capacity to help connect our residents of color um, and low income residents to good jobs and also support implementing um, job creation and, and service year opportunities. Uh, second, I'd like to advocate to expand job creation and service year programs for thousands of our residents who will be out of work by making changes within the capital budget and then also leading a major fundraising effort. Through my work with City Life and on our land trust, I see many people uh, at risk of eviction who cannot pay their rent. On our land trust, three out of the 15 families cannot pay their rent. So I'm advocating, um, you know, we, we, City Life, we fight displacement every day. <laughs> and um, as a person who's overcome displacement myself and my family, I'm, I'm advocating for this, um, you know, for, for those who are uh, at risk for eviction and, and hope that you would support this, this, um, this uh, um, action of equities uh, proposal. And I'd like to thank you for your time. Great. Thank you so much, Alma. You're um, welcome. Next up is Weezy Waldstein. Weezy, you have the floor. Hi, thank you very much. Can, uh, can you hear me? It's yes, can hear you great. Yes, okay. So my name is Weezy Waldstein. I'm with Action for Equity, and I think all the counselors have the actual proposal uh, that was emailed out by Marvin Martin, who's the director. Um, I wanted to add a couple of points as we've learned more about how to go about um, some of what we propose. First, um, we think 75% of households of color are in just a few neighborhoods. And those neighborhoods are lowest income, highest infection rates, and are gonna have the highest unemployment. And the more we hear about it, the unemployment could go on for a while. Our community organizations have pivoted to food delivery, and we've been serving 5,000 families a week. And I've been out surveying food pantries. And it's, it's very frightening what may be coming down the pike. And so we've really pushed to think about how do we um, take up some of the ideas. There's been an op-ed by Alan Kaze of City Year about service year jobs. How do we do this when we're not gonna be saved by Washington? Um, we have want to encourage the council to closely review capital projects that are funded solely by the city. You can't convert the, I'm, I'm, I'm learning these things and I'm bringing these ideas in, but I'm reading them carefully because it's new to me too, or it's new to me. You, you all, I'm sure, know more. You can't convert capital funds to operating funds, but you can re reallocate and reprogram capital funds into other projects that can be used in communities or hiring people from communities or in service year projects that reach a capital intent. So people have talked about digital divide. People have talked about green and environmental work. Um, and so really looking at the capital budget and finding a down payment that allows the city to go forward leading and then looking out to fundraise for other service year type opportunities. We've been talking to people who have these interests, who have been um, running some of these programs. And I think there would be a great deal of interest in the city. Um, and, and we've heard about the ideas for other funders of some of these projects that um, Boston tech companies that sell payroll and ordering software to restaurants, for example. We also want to advocate for additional funds for the Office of Economic Development so they have the staff capacity to support some of these ideas and also leveraging hiring from Boston employers. Thank you. Great, thanks so much. And do you know, is Marvin still planning to testify? He is, but I think he's coming later into the... Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks no. very much. Um, all right, uh, so then um, next up, I'll recognize um, Kevin. No. Oh. 
All right. So next up, we'll uh, hear from Kevin Cosby, and then Steve, you're on deck. Kevin, go ahead. You just need to unmute yourself. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Great. Kevin Cosby, uh, 39 year resident of West Roxbury. Um, I'm here to testify in regards to the operation uh, of Billings Field. Um, first off, it's great for the community. It's uh, great for sporting events. That field right now is uh, currently, um, it's, in rough it's in rough shape. So I'm just here to support Parkway Motion and Metal Mallee's uh, proposal to renovate building sales. Great, thank you so much for that testimony. Um, next up is uh, Steve, and sorry Steve, I'm not sure how to say your last name, Steve Bogg. Steve, you have to unmute yourself. Mute. There we okay, go. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, so when I heard about um, testimonies on the Billings Field, I wanted to be involved with it. I'm involved with Parkway in Motion, Parkway Cycling Club, and I've been living in West Roxbury for the last 45 years. My kids, my grandkids, all are invested in this community. Um, and as I go, even just bicycling out of the Y, we go through the uh, field, all the walkways are broken up. It's, uh, it's almost like it's a joke to get through there. And then I look at the stands where the kids are, where, the, uh, where all the um, people watch the games. And all of uh, the grandstands are all broken up. And it's almost like the park is just plum worn out it needs help everyone's just looking the other way it's been going on that way for a number of years the time i think this is an opportunity please let's just get it done for the community everyone tries to stay in west rock street start, tries to get involved and this is probably one of the uh, most central places that they have in the entire town so that's my support on uh billings field great Thank you so much, Steve. You got it. Um, next up is uh, Kelsey Galliano. Um, and after Kelsey, it'll be Sarah Parker. Kelsey, you have the floor. Okay. Uh, hi, guys. Um, how, um, I'm here um, to speak on behalf of um, increasing the funding, the city's funding for youth jobs to 15 million, as um, was previously mentioned by Ruby Rea. Uh, if you guys hear a little bit of noise in the background, I'm babysitting, so just don't mind that. Um, so uh, I really think that this is an important um, issue that we should, uh, the city should definitely try to um, focus on and um, support. Uh, I myself was used to be um, um, employed by the city, and it really helped me get into um, prepare myself for college and for setting up a career for myself. I uh, personally think it's very important that we get um, uh, youth from the ages of 14 to 22 um, within that range and then have specific groups um, for um, youth between the ages of 19 and 22 to out, uh, get um, more op opportunities to work as well. Um, to, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I said, for me personally, it um, has helped me really build um, my <laughs> career <laughs> now. And yeah, and I think, you know, we could definitely, um, we shouldn't, you know, over um, fund uh, the police department, which already gets a lot of funding um, and definitely efficiently uh, reallocate funds for youth um, because, you know, a lot of uh, young people need to be able to try to help their families in these desperate times. Um, it will keep keep them active and keep their morale up too. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, that's all. Great. Thank you so much, Kelsey. Um, all right. Uh, up next is um, Sarah Parker. 
And then uh, after Sarah, it'll be Deja Charles. Hi, um, thank you city councilors for your time. Um, my name is Sarah Parker and I am here to talk about the renovation of Billings Field. Um, I've lived in West Roxbury for 10 years with my husband, Mark. We have three kids of a 10 year old son, a seven year old daughter and a four year old daughter. Um, all my kids attend the Linden School. We actually, we live on Maxfield Street, which is if people are familiar with West Roxbury, it's basically two streets up from Billings Field, so it's very close. So we either walk by or drive by Billings Field every day, probably like six to eight times per day. And I can tell you without a doubt, it is a, a park that is so alive. It's absolutely, the uh, playground is always packed with kids. There's always people walking, there's people biking, there's people playing tennis, there's people playing basketball. Um, and it's being used all the time. And from some of the other comments that people made as well, there's also things about it that really need to be updated, like the paths are crumbling. Um, the field in itself has a major drainage problem. So I know for like some of the youth sports, that's an issue because a lot of times things get canceled. Um, and just on behalf of like, you know, speaking on behalf of families and mothers and, you know, there's so many young kids and so many young families that are now living in West Roxbury. I really think that this would be a great place to spend money and to renovate because I think I'm just estimating, I think there's something like 1500 kids between the Linden School, Kilmer, St. Teresa's and Holy Name that live or that go to, you know, go to school in West Roxbury and kids are using this, this billings all the time. Um, I, I believe that a renovation would increase the usage as well. And I think that it would help um, draw and keep families in the city. And it would give everyone a place to go. I mean, I talk a lot about families, but there's also people that walk their dogs. There's always, I'm down there all the time. I see elderly people who come out and take a walk. And I think it's very easy for people to get to as well because of the location, because it's right on the corner of Center Street and LaGrange. And um, just to mention some of the youth sports that use it, um, Parkway Motion, Tenacity uses it for their summer camp. Uh, Parkway softball, Parkway baseball, flag football. I know the um, city does their summer concert series there and the Core Pub Road Race. And the YMCA, which was just re redone, is right there. And people are constantly in and out of the YMCA. And um, so, yeah, so I just wanted to give my support for the project. And I think it would be an amazing thing for the community and for the community environment, which is something that's important to families um, in the area. Great. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your time. No, thank you, Sarah, for that testimony. Um, all right. Up next is Deja Charles, and then it's going to be Talila, and then um, Sheila Murphy. Deja? Thank you. Um, my name is Deja Charles. I live in Roxbury, and I'm part of REAP. I am advocating for the expansion of the youth jobs budget to $15 million and the acceptance of more youth employees with 5,000 summer jobs and 1,000 school year jobs. I hope that at this point, the importance of financial stability within youth households is clear. With a steep depression and unemployment of this pandemic hitting the already poverty stricken homes of our city's neighborhoods, I'm certain I don't have to emphasize how much YEE can positively change the lives of families during this time, especially with the added significance of a deadly pandemic calling for the emergency money of our reserves. Instead, I'll emphasize the importance of this funding as a resource. Spending on youth jobs allows for the de development of essential skills, character, and communication with the rest of the community at a time where we are torn apart. Youth who now have barely, youth who now have barely any access to education look towards YEE as a, as a necessity to continue their development. If it weren't for my job at REAP, I wouldn't be able to speak before you today. More students should be able to have this access to opportunities. Youth ages 14 to 22 will all benefit from an expansion of YEE as they all deserve this connection to opportunities and financial stability. Thank you. Great, thanks so much, Deja. Um, all right, next up is uh, Talila and then it'll be Sheila Murphy. Talila, Talia, Hi. sorry. I might have been Hi, saying my name's it. Talia. And I'm reading this testimony for Khalil from Roxbury. We're asking the city to increase funding for youth jobs to 15 million and make sure the summer jobs program is fully running. The city should fund 5,000 summer jobs and 1,000 year-round jobs from September to June and hire 14 to 22 year olds. 
and give grants to organizations. Also, police overtime should be decreased to 20 million or less, and the police budget should be decreased to 374 million or less. Invest that money in black and brown community, communities, including housing, healthcare, treatment, education, youth jobs, and eco economic development, and support for formerly incarcerated people. I've been a part of the fight for youth jobs for seven years, and it feels like the city council and the mayor doesn't care about anything but the police budget. Youth jobs are so important because of how it keeps youth off the street. Please ease the stress of parents and give experience. My first job when I was 15 shaped who I was and gave memories I still haven't forgotten. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Um, okay, next up is uh, Sheila and then it'll be Martin Chan. Um, Sheila, you have the floor. Hi, thank you. Thank you guys all for being here tonight. Um, I just wanna start by saying, um, I'm here to testify about the renovations to Billings Field. I've been a Parkway resident for over 49 years. Um, my daughters have been involved with Parkway Girls Softball for over 13 years, and I've been a board member for Parkway Girls Softball for the past five years. I support the renovation of the field. It is the hub of the Parkway, hosting many events throughout the year. The walkways are in disarray. disarray. The ba baseball field is virtually unusable, and the cement bleaches are crumbling. Last year during our softball season, we had a two week stretch of games where we had to cancel. The middle of Billings Field turns into a lake. I mean, we could probably get a canoe out there and paddle around in it. Um, a lot of it has to do with the condition of the fields um, and the safety of our players that um, we support Council O'Malley with moving forward with this. And I just wanna thank you guys all for your time. Great, thank you so much. Thanks for Thank you. Um, all right, Martin, you have the floor. Martin, you have to unmute yourself. I did I raise my hand. We can hear you. Hello? I didn't Martin, I didn't Martin, I think why don't you um why don't you Hello? hi we can't we can't really hear you um so maybe if you were were you trying to connect hello? with a different device yeah hello yeah okay here why don't you one second hello hi we can you hear us. Yes, hello. Yeah, you're on if you, you want to testify. Hello? Okay, I'm gonna, um, we're gonna go to, we're gonna go to someone else for a minute, Martin, and see if we can, uh, see if we can get you back, uh, see if we can get you back in a way that we can actually hear. Um, uh, Sarah, um, I think Sarah, Michael, Thomas, George, you're all in the waiting room. Um, I've also got someone under NV uh, and someone with a number 617-429-4785. Um, if any of you want to testify, if you could raise your blue hand, mark in the chat, change your um, name, that would be great. I'm gonna give it a second. We're gonna wait and see if we can get Martin back. And if not, we have a few people who submitted videos that we're also going to play for counselors. Okay, I think Carrie, why don't we play the videos that were submitted, and then um, and then we'll uh, we'll check in on whether we've got anybody else to testify live. Candace, is, is Carrie getting those uh, queued up? Yes, Carrie is getting the videos queued up now. Great, awesome, fantastic. Um,
Um, Carrie, I think we don't have sound on this one. Can anyone else? No one else can hear the sound, right? Okay. So we still need right. we still need sound. I guess technology isn't my thing today. I am trying to, I tried to download it and went it download. So. Hold on. Oh, it might be. and I'm a student support coordinator at Boston Day and Evening Academy. I've been in education for 25 years, and I continue to feel the passion and love of serving my students and families of Boston. The reason why I'm submitting this video is, is that I'm asking the city to increase funding for our youth for summer jobs to $15 million. Our young people deserve this. My story is, I was a kid that grew up in Jamaica Plain in the 80s. This was a time when we were going through a lot with a lot of things in the neighborhood. But during the time for summer jobs, I decided to apply for summer jobs. I grew up in a single family home for a generation. My mom worked two jobs and it was really difficult when she had to make ends meet. When I started working for summer jobs, that really saved my life. It kept me busy, it kept me inspired, I met great mentors and advocates that really wanted to be there for me. And I knew there was more to, to life than just my neighborhood and the kids around the way. I really had the opportunity to help out, help out at home. I was able to buy things that I needed to buy for myself for school. And I was grateful and extremely blessed. Because of the again that I say that it saved my life. This is one of the reasons why I went into education meeting great mentors and advocates that really inspired me to want to be able to help other young people. And at 49, and being in education for 25 years, I continue to have the love and the passion for helping others and helping young people become leaders and protective citizens. In conclusion, that I ask is that my story is not common, but I ask that a lot of young people deserve and need an opportunity to grow and to become leaders and productive citizens. And so I ask is to please invest in our young people. I understand this is a time, it's a difficult time with COVID-19, but this is a time when we need to come together. And we always continue to say is Boston strong and work together and make hope. And I understand, but I ask is that an investment like this can really inspire and give hope to young people. And when I speak to young people and they tell me that it's times when it's hard for them and they feel anxiety and they feel depressed because they don't have that income coming in at home or a family member has lost a job or they just want to help, is that this is an opportunity for them to grow and be inspired. And I ask to please invest in our young people. Thank you. Uh, my name's Shavar. I live in Dorchester. I'm with REAP. We're asking the city to increase funding for youth jobs to 15 million and make sure summer jobs programs are fully running. The city should fund 5,000 summer jobs, 1,000 year round jobs from September to June, hiring 14 to 22 year olds, and give grants to organizations. Also, police overtime should be decreased to 20 million or less, and the police budget should be decreased to 374 million or less, invest that money into black and brown communities, including housing, healthcare, treatments, education, youth jobs, economic development, and support for formerly incarcerated people. Also jobs are a key contributor to for people to provide for their families. And also, and this is why I think we should get more funding to protect and expand youth jobs and why the police budget and police overtime needs to be cut. We need 15 million to double youth jobs, expand the months, and expand the age ranges. Good morning, Boston City Council, Council Women, and Council Men. Thank you for having me here today. My name is Suzanne Patrice Bruce. I am a resident in the Boston area. My family is six generations Bostonian. I come to you today to implore you not to pass a budget 
for fiscal year 2021 that has $60 million for overtime. We know and have enough research and information that says community policing or policing surveillance and criminalization has not warranted a safe neighborhood. We need to put money to a better use for our youth and our young adults. We could better use that money for employment so families, so you, young adults can help their families with employment opportunities during our novel crisis. This is a time where we must stop polarizing our neighborhoods. In the Blackstone Franklin Square, the Blackstone Franklin Square neighborhood, as you know, there has been money that has been earmarked for the neighborhood association to put up surveillance cameras. That has been the decision. Um, we cannot continue to criminalize and polarize our great city. We can do better. And I encourage you, and I know that you will support my plea and my request of utilizing the money in a much more effective manner for justice for the whole community um, around employment, health disparities, as well as education. Thank you. Thank you. Carrie, are we missing the tail end of this testimony or is the video replaying? Hello, good morning. My name is Nep, and my neighborhoods are Roxbury, Dorchester, Mattapan, and Hyde Park. I am asking the city council to take a stand. Real public safety comes from cutting the Boston Police Department's budget and investing in what communities need, housing healthcare, treatment, education, youth jobs, and economic development. This includes supporting formerly incarcerated people who need housing, healing, and economic stability after prison or jail. The funds should go to go into funding for youth jobs as well. Commissioner Gross wants some outrageous funds for his department. I believe that's not right. We are spending money on more guns and badges. Why invest in police if you can't even invest in your community, the black and brown community? We should use those funds and put them to better use. Plus, the Boston Police Department makes an extra $61 million in overtime, plus $31 million on detail pay. So they don't need any more at all. They don't even deserve the $414 million. What Commissioner Gross calls training isn't what I'm seeing. What they call policing isn't policing. It's called racial profiling in these neighborhoods. It's all the Boston Police Department does. Good job, Commissioner, you got stats. Guess what? I got some stats of my own. Underly funded black and brown communities, plus the lack of resources in those communities, plus the Cowboy Police Department equals disaster and money wasted. Investing in our community is better than policing any day. Thank you for your time. Great. I think those are all the videos. Is that right, Carrier Candace? Someone? Yep, that's, that's all we have submitted in the Great, perfect. Okay, so next up is going to be, and um, we've got some more testimony in person, so I'm going to go to Martin and then it'll be Louisa and then uh, Nisaj, Nisoj, sorry. Um, so Martin, you're back with us. Now go ahead and unmute. Hello. Um, Hello. Hi, Martin. Uh, Hi, Martin Chen's mom. Hi, Martin Chen's mom. 
、呃，我个仔马田喺唐人街中学读七年级，而家。My son Mark Chan is a middle schooler in seventh grade at a school in Chinatown. 誒，佢有語言障礙，有特別誒，有特殊教育。He is a special needs student. 誒，我期望學校批多啲資源俾我個仔，誒，因為佢有特殊誒語言障礙。My son has um language. Uh, a language delay, and I'm really hoping that there could be more resources invested in、um, special needs children and their services. 我觉得喺呢个疫情期间咧，希望公校诶拨多啲资源帮嗰啲有需要嘅特殊教育嘅孩子咯，细路仔咯。Especially in light of this pandemic, I strongly advocate that there needs to be a lot more resources invested in our children who have ELL and special needs. Uh, I can't do that. Um, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you.、Uh, Thanks to Melissa again for translating. Really appreciate it.、Um, all right. Next up is、uh, Luisa. Hello, everyone, and thank you for this、Louisa? time.、Uh, can you hear me? Just want to make sure. Uh oh. Hello. Can you hear me?、Yep. Can hear you great. Hello. Yes, we、oh, can、perfect. hear you. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you.、Uh, oh, great, great. Um, thank you for this time,、um, and thank you for all the great work that everybody is、um, trying to accomplish.、Uh, myself and some of the other residents in、uh, the area where I li live, we are、uh, reaching out today、um, to bring to everybody's attention an area here in our neighborhood that, when improved, could yield a tangible benefit to both、um, the neighborhood and the city. Uh, please know that it's over 10 years that we've been asking、um, for to address this issue、um, uh, for this specific、uh, Boston Center for Youth and Family here in Jamaica Plain, the Henningen.、Um, this facility is located、uh, on Heath Street in Jamaica Plain, close to Brookline and bordering Mission Hill. Uh, which are growing. It's it's a whole growing neighborhood at this point. As residents of this area, we're beyond grateful to have such a center in the neighborhood. And the purpose of this testimony is to bring to your attention the deeply rundown conditions of what could be a modern and welcoming facility that neighbors would actually want to use. A re revitalization of the overall facility will sustain exercise habits fundamental to everyone's health, and encourage an inclusive community spirit, much in need, while yielding a more noticeable financial return for the city. Often people have come but never returned because unwilling to use a facility that is neglected. Generally unkept and minimally supervised. Although more recent,、um, more recently, there have been very modest changes. The facility does not present itself as an option as it could be, nor it matches matches the standard of a growing city such as Boston. Additionally, given that during the day this facility is used by the Hennigan School、uh, school kids. Uh, we feel strongly that it is time to act to ensure that these youths are well taken care of, as other schools and Boston Center Youth and Family Facility are already doing. They should not suffer.、Um, at the last、uh, budget hearing on BCYF, it was concerning to me to hear Mrs. Morales' limited vision for. BCYF in general, he has expressed that the center's facility,、uh, the center's focus, is to ensure that kids stay in school and ready them for the workplace. 
um, I was glad to hear that Anissa brought up the fact that the cultural side, it's just as important. It was also surprising to me to hear his refusal for help in securing additional funding when one of the counselors um, proposed it. This facility here in Jamaica Plain could be used for a variety of activities to stimulate and support the vibrancy of this great neighborhood. And um, BCYF should be centers to create community, promote social and physical wellness, reduce risky behavior, and provide a safe structure environment. So there are so many use that can be done. We have been trying for 10 years um, to bring attention to this. So we hope that in the 2020 budget, um, the health, physical and mental and social health of the neighborhood will be um, um, taken in consideration um, and uh, the use of this facility will become a jewel for the neighborhood. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, uh, Louisa. And now, um, next up uh, is uh, Naisaj. Sorry, forgive me. Please correct my pronunciation. Yeah, it's okay. Um, it's Naisaj. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. We can see you. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Naisaj. Um, I'm a young person from Mattapan. I've worked with numerous youth organizations such as Madison Park Development Corporation, Teen Empowerment, and I Have a Future. Because of Madison Park Development Corporation, I have been able to work closely with Councillor Julie Mejia, who has generously um, taken me on, has her youth liaison. I cannot begin to express how much um, working with these youth organizations has benefited me. Because of my youth organization, I do better in school and I'm better prepared for my future and every young person deserves a chance at that. Because of my youth organization, I have made lifelong networks and connections and I believe Again, every young person deserves a chance at that. Investing in youth jobs is very important. Um, I hear often in our cities that youth are the future of our communities. Um, and while that is true, it is also true that we are the present and right now it doesn't feel that way. If Boston truly believes that, there need, um, that youth are the future and the present of our communities, then $15 million does need to be allocated towards youth jobs. Um, it, is our, it is time that our city starts investing in our young people and worrying about the welfare of our underrepresented youth and their families. So thank you so much. Great, thank you so much for joining us. Um, all right, so now I, I'm gonna see of folks who are still here with us, um, Caroline, Caroline Reeves, would you like to testify? Raise your, raise your blue hand or answer in the chat if yes. And I'll just say again that if, I know Sarah McCammon testified earlier today at a different hearing, but Sarah, if you'd like to be testifying, Michael Ranola, Thomas Thermidor, George, um, if any of you all, um, or the folks who are under, there's a phone number and an NV, you should just let me know um, in the chat. All right, and I think uh, it sounds like everybody who's here right now is just here to watch. Um, so I think what we'll do now um, is I really want to thank everybody who came and testified um, and uh, and those who submitted videos in advance and the people who have testified throughout our whole process because um, it's just so important, as many of my colleagues said. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to hold this open um, for a while still, uh, probably at least until um, at least until quarter of. Um, so uh, what what we'll do is I I will stay here and. Um, wait and see if more folks show up to testify. I know we've got a couple of people who had signed up to testify who haven't made their way into the waiting room yet. Um, and uh, counselors, if any of you want me to text you if we've got public testimony back, we'll do that. Um, and, uh, and otherwise, um, if we don't get further folks, we'll conclude the hearing, but we'll wait for a while. So again, just really want to thank everybody um, for sharing, for sharing and, uh, and, and nudging us in lots of good directions. So. Um, Candice, can we put up a slide again that just lets people know that uh, we're holding the room open? Um, why don't we, oh, that's just, let's say 7.45 for now and we'll see. Okay, I'll put that up now. Great, thanks so much. You're welcome. Oh wait, Candice, before you do, sorry, false, false, 
false bottom here. I just saw that Marvin just joined us and he was one of the people I was waiting on. Um, so let me have, let me let Marvin testify. And I also see that a Tim has joined us. Tim, if you can chat or post or raise your blue hand if you want to testify. Um, but Marvin, uh, you've now got the floor. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not sure what might have already been mentioned. Um, so both, both, both Wheezy um, and uh, another another um, person that's speaking on. on um, sorry, I'm blanking on the name. Also, both spoke already. Oh, okay. So in that case, I, I don't want to just repeat what's already been said, so I'll be very brief. Um, I just, um, uh, you know, believe that at this particular um, moment in time, with the, um, the, with the pandemic and what's looking to be devastating effects in communities of color, that we really need to um, look at possible ways of funding job creation and other initiatives in these communities. And so the proposal of doing um, uh, service year jobs, which is something that was done, you know, in the, the Great Depression and in other times, um, because we are expecting the city has, has to even say they expect unemployment to double at least in communities of color. And, you know, it wasn't great before. So I think, you know, creating uh, service year jobs um, would go a long way to doing that. And, and, and so looking at the capital projects that would um, support those jobs. And so the hope is to look at the capital budget and um, I think we do, you know, we did come up with a couple of ideas that people may have submitted already where we could shave some money um, from, not from the capital budget, but shift it from certain line items to other line items. We think it's, it's important. And, and then the other is to, um, to help um, uh, make that happen in a co cohesive way, including the community pipeline that has already started in partnership with the city is to increase the staffing capacity at Office of Economic Development so that they will actually have um, a couple of staff people who could oversee um, this process. So that's my comments. Great, thank you so much, Marvin. We really appreciate that. Um, and I haven't gotten a signal from Tim, so now we will go to the tile um, and we'll just hold the space open for at least another 20 minutes um, in case anybody else joins us, so. Um, thanks again, to, thanks again to everyone who's come to testify. I will see you soon, maybe, or maybe not. Yeah. Or maybe not. Either way, um, no. I'll. I'll. I'm. I'm happy to let people know if people come back. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Kenzie. Maybe see you soon. Great. Thanks, Counselor. Oh, there you are, Marvin. <laughs> Yeah, I just realized I wasn't on. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we heard you. We heard you loud and clear. So. But thanks so much for joining. Sorry. So yeah, I'm afraid you caught the tail end of the testimony. So now we're just uh, holding this, holding the space for anybody else who jumps in, but. Okay. Oh, I'm surprised it was over this quick. Well, we heard from a bunch of people, but uh, okay. yeah, you know, so it's a nice almost summer night. Uh, yeah, it's lovely outside. Too many people walking around without their face masks, though. Oh, tell me about it. All right, so I guess I'll jump off too then. Great. Well, thanks again for joining us and thank you for all your work on that proposal. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Have a good night.
Liz, did you say, hear what I just said or was I muted? You were on mute. I didn't hear you. Can you say it again? Oh, I was just, I was telling Liz that we're just waiting for, uh, for new, for possible folks who might join to testify. Oh, okay. I yeah. think we might, yeah, yeah, because she just joined. Um, I see someone named Yali has joined. Um, uh, the, so if you if you want to testify, Ali, if you just put it in the chat or raise your blue hand or otherwise signal. And then I think uh, George said that we might be joined shortly by someone named Jason Moreno to testify, but so far we don't have anybody. Um, I see someone with a very long username has joined the chat. Um, if you are here to testify, if you can just raise your blue hand or type in the chat and let me know what your name is. Okay, and I see, I see Yali's hand is raised. One second. Yali, I'm just hanging on one second. Letting my colleagues who may want to rejoin, rejoin.
Okay, Yali, why don't you go ahead? Do you know, can you unmute yourself? Yali, you're muted. Candace, can we get Yali unmuted? I'm trying to unmute this person, but for some reason it won't. Okay. Um, all right, I'm moving Ellie back into the attendee for now. Um, and I see, all right, well, I'm gonna recognize, I see Jason's here and I know he wants to testify, so I'm gonna. I'm now I'm now going to recognize Jason Moreno. Jason, if you want to unmute yourself and turn on your video, if you have it, and go ahead. The floor is yours. All right, thank you. Hi, my name is Jason Moreno. I live in the Dorchester Roxbury area. I'm a part of REAP, YJPU. We're a youth-led organization. We're asking the city to increase funding for youth jobs to 15 million and make sure summer job, the summer job program is fully running. The city should fund 5,000 summer jobs, 1,000 year round jobs from September to June and hire 14 to 22 year olds and give grants to organizations. Also police overtime should be decreased to 20 million or less and the police budget should be decreased to 374 million or less. Invest that money in black and brown communities, including housing, healthcare, treatment, education, youth jobs, economic development, and support for formerly incarcerated people. Youth jobs are important, one, because they provide us something to do. Would you rather have us working and developing life skills or sitting around having nothing to do? Increasing youth jobs provides another source of income for lower income families, so that'll help out a lot. It teaches life skills to students, it gives them college recommendations, and it leads them on the right path from the beginning. With me, it opened my eyes to organizing. I didn't realize I would like it so much. After working with REAP, YGPU, the City School, and DSNI, I came to have a liking for community organizing, all because, uh, all because of a youth job. And that's why I think we should get more funding to protect and expand youth jobs and why the police budget and police overtime needs to be cut to 15 million to double youth jobs. I mean, it needs to be cut. We need 15 million to double youth jobs, expand the months and expand the age ranges. Great, thank, thank you. you so much, Jason. And thank you for joining us to testify. Um, I'm gonna try one more time. Yali, I'm gonna try switching you into the panelist mode again and seeing if you can unmute. Um, All right, I think we're still not having any any luck on that front. Okay, um, I'm gonna hold, uh, Candace, can we throw the tile up again? I'm just gonna hold it open for a few more minutes. Actually, before I do, I should let, Councillor Braden, do you wanna say anything in regard to public testimony? Just cause you weren't here when we did the quick remarks at the start. No, just to thank all those folks who took time to make public testimony. Um, their input is very important. 
And uh, thank you, Con Councillor Bach, Chairwoman Bach, for um, doing such an incredible job in the Ways and Means hearings. Um, it's been a it's been a very educational all round. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for participating. Um, and uh, again, while we're waiting, I might actually also just recognize uh, President Janey. I don't know if you want to say anything. I appreciate you sticking around. Well, no, just I want to say thank you again. As I said at the beginning, this is a really important part of our process. Obviously, the public can weigh in uh, in any of our hearings, but having a time that is dedicated just for them, I think, is really important. I appreciate all who um, provided testimony, whether uh, whatever language they did or whether it was video. Um, and I hope that you stay engaged. Your, your voice is really important. So I appreciate everyone, uh, appreciate everyone who weighed in. And uh, another special thanks to you, Madam Chair, and to Central Staff for all their hard work. Thank you. Seriously, major credit to Central Staff, um, whom, uh, you know, it's behind the scenes for the public, but uh, we've been doing a ton of hearings and um, sometimes they're back to back to back and it's incredibly complicated to figure out how to how to stream them and manage them all um, especially with everyone working remote so central staff is really the the mvp of, of the whole process and of the public engagement process in particular so here 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 <laughs> thank you everyone yeah <laughs> thank, you, thank you Candace. thank you thank you everyone to lady everyone the whole team, yeah. but thank you guys. Michelle, Shane, Cora, all the whole crew. Yes. It's been great. Um, okay. Um, I think, yeah. Okay. Candace is throwing up this tile. Yeah, exactly. I think we'll just, we'll just, my last, last ditch will be to leave it open until eight and then at, um, at eight o'clock, we'll definitely close out if we haven't had anybody. So. Okay. Good evening. Uh, good night, everyone. I have to go. Good night. Thanks for stopping by, Liz. Have a good night. Bye. You too.